People are gonna start accusing me of like content theft if I keep this up. Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we are gonna be talking about 9-6 versus 10-4. AKA, I have stolen chocolate and Miss Nyara's guides. That's not strictly true. Actually, it is kind of true, but like if I give credit, it's okay, right? But that's not all I'm gonna do. I do have a little bit of integrity left. So I'm actually going to speed run through every single character over here. And then after that, I'll kind of do like a review of what they are saying over here. Funnily enough, there is a little bit of like like discrepancies between the two and there might even be discrepancies when I go through it. And so without further ado, let's get into the first segment in which I will be speedrunning all of the characters and which like rank you should put them up at. All right guys, so general guiding principles, if we are losing TP boost or losing TP retain, we are not going up. And so therefore they are staying at 9-6. Just from like a competitive CP point of view, like these two are just the most important stats in the game for us. As usual, massive caveat that I am approaching it from like a competitive point of view. If you guys aren't like, you know, hardcore super fun following CN or JP timelines, then don't even worry about it. Just slam them. All right. So with that being said, let's run through these and let's see how we go. Akari is losing TP retain. She stays at 9.6. Akino is losing TP boost. She is staying at 9.6. Anna is gaining a lot of effective physical HP as well as a whole bunch of other stats. She is going to 10.4. However, most people don't use Anna these days, so she is lower priority. There are safer options. Aoi is losing TP boost, so she is 9.6 if you do use her. And so now this is an interesting one because this is where the spreadsheets actually differ. For me personally, negative 10 TP boost already means instant 9-6. However, you guys already know that Arisa gets like a massive TP boost, especially from her skills. And so there is a chance that timelines will work with her at 10-4 instead. As you can see at 10-4, she gains so much physical attack, but does lose that TP boost. And so the conclusion here for me is pre-farm for 10-4. And then out of all of your clan mates, you get one person to go to 10-4. Go ahead and use that 10-4 to test out the timelines and see if it works. And if they still work, then away you go. You can go 10-4. However, Arisa is probably one of the only characters Characters I would actually make this exception for. The other thing that really convinces me to go to 10-4 is actually this 25 accuracy over here. Accuracy is kind of useless in CB, but it's so massive in arena, especially when you're hitting like the Miyakos and the Kukas. I don't know about you guys, but like it feels really freaking bad when your archers, who are supposed to be really accurate, they miss on the tanks. All right, so that's that. Next, we've got Ayana. TP boost loss. She is staying at 9-6. All right, then we have Chika. She is losing. No way. She's staying at 9-6. Jita, she is not losing much at all. She is gaining so much. And so, so she is going to 10-4. Erika is losing 5 TP boost, but she is actually gaining quite a fair bit of stats. Like, look at that fat physical attack. Nevertheless, I would say 9-6, but pre-farm for 10-4. Hatsune is not losing any of the TP stats, and if anything, she's actually gaining a massive amount of magical attack and magic crit rate. Hiyori is losing a crap ton of TP boost. She is staying at 9-6 for sure. Do not even need to pre-farm. Ilya, okay, this is an interesting one, because Ilya gains a lot of magic attack and a lot of magical crit, right? So this one goes out to you ballsy people. If you have, like, massive balls, then you go freaking 10-4. Why massive balls? Because if your Ilya crits herself, then like, yeah, it, it feels bad, man. But if she crits the enemy, then like, you know? So yeah, it's up to you. If you want to play it safe, 9-6. If you want to go big balls, it's freaking 10-4. All right, Eo, she is, whoa, she only gains. Holy moly. And so she goes to 10-4 easily. Jun, we are losing TP boost. Now, Jun is an interesting one. Jun sometimes stays at 8-6. However, if your Jun is at three stars, the chances are she is not tanky enough. Personally, I've actually gone to 9-6 and I think that 9-6 is a sweet spot for her. Going up to 10-4 is giving her only like 112 HP. That's kind of sucks. Or rather, maybe I should look at this one. Effective physical HP of 1.8k and eh, I don't think it's worth it. I think it's okay to juice up Jun, but if you are going to do it, like bottom priority. There just really is not too much change here. Next, we've got Kari losing 17 TP boost, which is insane. She stays at 9.6. Kyaru is losing a whole bunch of bulk, but she is gaining some magic attack and magic crit rate. I'll freaking go because glass cannons. Let's go. Same kind of deal for Summer Kyaru, easy 10-4. All right, Kokoro and Summer Kokoro are interesting because they're actually gaining TP boost here. On top of that, they are actually losing dodge, which is a good thing because you want them to get hit. Honestly, I look at all of this and I'm like, 10-4 mm, is looking pretty sweet. And so if you guys did watch my last video, I did recommend that Cockroach goes to like 9-1 or like 10-1. I would say at this point, stay at 10-1 and see what your guild says. They might say 10-4, but I'm going to stay with 10-1 and see like where we go. Next, we've got Kuka and she is gaining a lot of things. So she is going to 10-4 for sure. She's losing magic attack and magic crit rate. Like, huh. 
Who even cares? Next, we've got Kurumi. I know not many people use her, but she is a tank and she is gaining bulk. So she's going up for sure. Yoka, not losing much. Magic defense and HP. What? Who even cares? We're getting magic attack and crit rate up to 10 for for sure. Lima, Lima, Lima. Massive TP boost. That's actually really good. As well as like all of this bulk. Lima is going to 10 for 100%. Mahiru, Mahiru, Mahiru. Ooh, TP boost lost. I would recommend that you would stay at 9-6 if you use Mahiru. She is losing quite a fair bit of stats, but the TP boost minus 8 is already pretty massive. All right, next we've got Maho, who is gaining a whole bunch of bulk and like literally everything except she is losing a little bit of TP retained. However, on the other hand, she is also gaining 25 HP recovery boost. I think that this definitely outweighs the TP retained. And so therefore, my conclusion for Maho is go to 10-4. We've got Makoto losing 15 for TP boost. Oh my god, Makoto, you stay at 9-6 or even 9-5 actually. My one is actually at 9-6 because I had to equip it for one of the bosses. But generally speaking, everyone should be at 9-5. Next, we've got Mif Mifuyu, Mifuyu, Summer, and Mimi, all of them are losing a whole bunch of TP boosts, although they are gaining physical attack, but they are still losing bulk. I am still going to say 9-6 for them. After that, we've got Misaki. She is becoming more glass cannon, just like the other mages, and she is not losing any of the TP stats, so she is going to 10-4. Misato, kind of the same deal as Maho. She is losing the TP retain, but she is getting a little bit of HP recovery boost, but not only that, she is also getting magic attack. And so she is gaining quite a fair bit. I would say at least pre-farm, but like if it were me, I would just go freaking slam it. I hope that doesn't come bite me in the ass, but like it is what it is. Misogi is gaining a whole bunch of bulk, and like for you Misogi users, I think you'll know better than me. But to be honest, if I saw all of these stats and you're only losing 5 TP retained for it, I'd probably go for it actually. Mitsuki is pretty easy, TP boost minus 10, she is going to stay at 9-6. Miyako, she is gaining TP boost and gaining a whole bunch of bulk, oh my god, she is going to 10-4, 100%. Next we've got Monica, who is gaining accuracy, losing magic attack, a bit of magic defense, but still getting more effective HP overall. Losing HP drain, gaining dodge. So Monica, as you guys know, she is predominantly like a PvP unit. And so from that perspective, accuracy, dodge, physical crit rate, I think I think this is worth going up to 10 4 for. Especially when she's losing a whole bunch of useless stats. Like she doesn't use M attack. She doesn't use the HP recovery boost. I think this is an easy 10 4 to be honest. Next, we've got Ninon who is losing 15 TP boost. Absolutely not. Not on my watch. No way. No freaking way. 9 6 Ninon, you stay at 9 6. Next, we've got Nozomi, who's losing a little bit of TP boost, but she is gaining a massive amount of bulk. This one is honestly like pretty freaking hard. If you guys have been following my other videos, you guys will know how much I value the TP boost on Nozomi because I use Nozomi in conjunction with Monica to stop like the enemy Tamakis. And to do that, it means that I need Nozomi to UB before Tamaki does so that Tamaki actually aims Nozomi when Tamaki UBs. So from an arena point of view, this might be a big deal. However, that is a lot of effective physical HP and magic HP. And so with that in mind, I would actually actually pre-farm her and see where like we go. There are going to be some brave people who are just going to slam it and so we should just see like you know how it works hey. But generally speaking like I would take this. I would really really take that. On the other hand Pekrin is losing TP boost but her like UB doesn't really do much at all and she is gaining so much bulk. Oh my god she's going to 10-4 easily. We got Summer Pekrin. She is only getting stronger. Actually wait everything is good. I don't really see any downsides here. Pekrin 10-4 no doubt about it. Alright next we've got Ray who is losing 10 TP boost. However she she is gaining a bunch of stats, but like, oh man, I, I wouldn't touch that. Unfortunately, in my experience, Ray is one of the ones who actually charge TP like super slow. And so to actually take away another 10%, like I wouldn't do that. And despite that, I actually have not used Ray since like CB1. So I would say even if you're going to push her up, like she is the bottom of the barrel priority. All right, next we've got Rin and Rin is getting TP boost and a whole bunch of bulk. Oh my Lord. Okay. Rin is going up to 10 for sure. He's losing a bit of magic attack and a bit of dodge. However, with all of the other stats in mind, she is still gaining effective HP. Alright, next we've got Reno and she is losing TP boost, so I would say that she stays at 9-6. Same kind of story for Siren, Shinobu. Yes, they are getting more attack, but like, I'm a little bit wary. Reno just really isn't that strong right now, especially in the current meta. And so not only are you trading off that, you're also trading off a whole bunch of effective physical HP. My conclusion is, is that I probably would want to make sure that my Reno fires off her cannon. And so for me, Reno stays at 9-6. Saren is losing 10 TP boost, she is staying at 9-6 for sure, and Shinobu is losing 5? Uh, this one is kind of like a non-issue to me. Shinobu is not used overly much. Like, I'd probably leave her at 9-6 at this point. And even if you were to upgrade her, I'd say bottom priority. She's in a nutshell, like, just a support. So, like, I would say her stats don't make that much of a difference. And if you wanted to juice anyone, you should juice your DPS first. Alright, next we've got Shiori, who is losing TP boost. That is a no way for me. Shiori stays at 9-6 for sure. Shizuru, oh wow, that's an interesting one. Okay, she's losing TP boost, but not only that, she's losing a lot of effective physical HP. Why is that even 
happening. She is gaining physical defense. She's losing a little bit of HP and she's losing some dodge. Just by looking at all of this, I would say that she actually stays at 9.6. However, what just caught my eye is this guy over here. HP recovery boost is actually pretty massive for Shizuru since she does the healing. And so that really kind of makes me feel like, oh, actually, maybe I would go to 10-4 with her. And to be honest, if you run her with like another tank or like run her in store comps, I probably would go 10-4 with her. However, I would say that 9-6 is probably not a mistake either. All right, next we've got Suzume and she is losing some TP retain and some bulk. Mm, I don't know about that one. However, she is gaining HP recovery boost and magic attack, so that could make up for it. Honestly speaking, if you use Suzume, you're probably going to know her better than me. I can't advise on Suzume. Like some clans have definitely used her for past CBs. I think to be honest, everyone's going to know better than me for Suzume. Actually, for some of Suzume, I would take her up for sure. Gaining 25 HP recovery boost is already massive, but on top of that, she's gaining a lot of bulk. So I would say that Summer Suzume goes up, but like Suzume herself, I'm actually not sure. I feel like she's actually losing a bit too much for it to be worth it. But with that being said, she's also gaining a lot of magic attack and magic crit rate. Honestly, if I was a Suzume user, I would just slam it because I see glass cannon. I want to do that. <laughs> All right, I'm noticing that we might be getting off the screen. So we got to do like a little uh, squeeze. All right, and there we have it. Hopefully that is a little bit better for you guys. All righty, next we have Suzuna, who's going to be gaining physical attack. However, she is losing TP boost, but gaining accuracy. Again, accuracy is awesome especially on the archers but losing that tp boost like especially for the highest level of play you don't want that so tonight is staying at 96 for sure tamaki tamaki is an interesting one because she is actually gaining physical attack though she is losing tp boost i would say that it doesn't matter i think that she is going to be able to perform at either however for me again like the tamaki monica nozomi interaction i would actually leave tamaki at 96 just because like maybe with that extra 5 tp boost and if there are any nozomis that lose that 5 tp boost maybe i can go catch some mages but to be honest i don't think it matters too much though i do see this like massive physical crit rate and this physical attack going up oh hard trade-off to be honest a little bit more testing required but i don't think either are gonna like brick anything next we've got zumuki and zumuki is losing 17 tp boost absolutely not she stays at 96 yori is pretty straightforward she's not losing anything and she's pretty much gaining magic attack and magic crit rate she goes up for sure next we've got yui and she is losing a bit of tp retain but she is gaining a whole bunch of other stuff i would say that she goes up yukari is losing the tp boost however she is is gaining the HP recovery boost, which is actually really nice. From a PvP perspective, I would freaking like take her up to 10-4, absolutely no doubt. On top of that, she is gaining a whole bunch of bulk, and so from a PvP perspective, I would take her up like no doubt to 10-4. I'm just thinking back to CB, and I can't remember like any times where Yukari, it was like, oh my god, you gotta spam Yukari's UB and really get it off. And so it's for that kind of reason that I would say that this is a solid 10-4, like these stats are just quite insane. And last we've got Yuki, who is losing a bit of TP retain, but she is gaining magic attack and magic crit rate. I'll say it's kind of like a non-issue you don't really use yuki for her ub although it is quite nice and even if you were to take her up i would say she is probably bottom priority all right that was not really a speed run that actually took forever holy moly okay so that being said let's have a look at what these other guys are saying so i think this one is by chocolate no this is miss niara and then we've got one by chocolate over here generally speaking their logic is going to be the same as mine which is really awesome to see and so i just wanted to see if there's anything that was drastically different so looking through this stay on 96 all lower if noted so we got all of those like massive tp boost losers and these are all staying there 100 percent agree tsumuki ayane i still remember oh my god that negative 17 tp boost is so massive shinobu here i think this is kind of what i was saying as well 10 4 but like honestly i think shinobu is a non-issue nino mitsuki 100 percent 9 6 and then we've got suzuna and shiori staying down here which is right and this oh my god that freaking self crit oh yeah i don't know if it's just minor gain if you guys like pro gamers you'd probably do it all right let's go to the next one in which he says kokoro and Summer Kokoro are going to either 10 4 or 10 1. Again, I'd say probably stay at 10 1 for now. And then you've got Akari who is losing 5 TP retain but getting more P bulk. I think she's gaining enough for her to warrant going to 10 4, especially if you're using her in the context of like a Miyako killer. After that, we've got Chika and she is fine on a budget. Yeah, I agree. I just don't think Chika is like, she's not used enough to warrant her getting like upgraded like ASAP. All right, next we've got rank 10 4 and 9 6 are mostly identical. And so we've got Jun, which I agree with. However, she's gaining a lot of stats going to 10-4 but yeah definitely lower priority then we've got tamaki yup summer tamaki who wasn't actually on there but i think generally speaking my assessments were like kind of the same here same same over here and uh, cb for niche use wow i'd like to see it and then we've got these guys over here i would say that saren should probably stay at 9-6 with that being said though like saren's ub is kind of inconsequential so like it could be a good idea to go to 10-4 so yeah this is kind of different to me i get the logic and i kind of agree all right next we've got Aoi, who is losing this stuff but gaining this stuff i think it's okay yeah honestly i agree with this list b 
these are all kind of like the inconsequential characters. It's like, oh, you could or you don't have to. For me, the only one that stands out is the Tamaki, as you guys already know, like the whole Tamaki Nozomi Monica thing. All right, next we've got the 10 4, and the majority of the tanks are going up, which I completely agree with. As we saw over here, they are getting so much bulk. Like, if I could sort by the tanks, like, look at that Kurumi, Kuka, Kokoro. Kokoro is not a tank. Oh, I mean, in CB, she is a tank. Haha, <laughs> but nowhere else. Lima, look, everyone is just getting so much bulk. So I completely agree with that. Then we've got Matsuri, who I don't think we actually evaluated. But if she is only gaining things, then yeah, for sure. It looks like Tomo, Samapeko, and Jita are gaining all of these stats, but not losing any TP retain. Instant 10 4. All right, here we've got Yukari, who's definitely going up. Okay. I mean, it makes sense because, like, her UB for me personally, it has never, like, kind of been time sensitive. And so, yeah, I would agree with that. Monica, yeah, we saw how much, like, stats she was getting. She's going up for sure, as well as Rin. We saw that as well. Next, we've got Anna, who was going up. Yup. Yori, who was going up as well. Arisa, interesting, interesting. It's hard because, like, Arisa for me misses a lot in PvP, and 25 accuracy actually is going to solve a lot of that. And so, Nyara's notes is that the TP boost loss does not affect her timing usually. Yeah, and so that's kind of the same logic that I used if I was to go for 10 4. I think it's sound logic, however, like, you should pre farm and then see what your guild says if you're in a competitive clan. All right, next we've got Reno, and she is going up. Interesting. Okay. And so Nyara is saying that the TP boost loss does not affect the Reno cannon. Personally speaking, I, this is not really a way that I like to play. Like, I like to be on the safe side. She is getting a bit more attack and crit. However, she is losing some, like, P bulk. On top of that, she is losing the dodge, but most importantly, she is losing the TP boost. And a lot of the time that you run Reno, you actually run her into, like, Hatsune. Hopefully, Nyara is right. And if you do run her into Hatsune, then, like, Hatsune still gets bombed, like, ASAP. And if that's the case, then yeah, sure, we go for 10 4. But, like, for me personally, I'd stay at 9 6 until I saw more proof. And then we see all of the other mages who are getting glassier, but they are getting more cannon. All right, after that, we have Eeyore, who is getting way more bulk. She's going up for sure. Suzume, honestly, I still can't say 100%. Again, if you guys use Suzume, you guys probably would know better. I personally think it's fine for her to go up. However, again, like a lower priority. After that, we've got Misato. I thought that Misato was an easy 10 4. But Nyara is saying 9 6 might see some niche CB use. Okay, that's really interesting. Uh, why would you want to do that? I've not come across a timeline which wants less healing. Having more stats, yes, because you might gain more TP, but like having less healing, which is your sustain, I don't know about that one. After seeing all of those stats, I would probably say 10 4. Next, we've got Summer Suzume. I think she was an obvious 10 4, but I mean, like, these are all in the 10 4. So I think, really, we're kind of saying the same thing. All right, Maho is going up for sure, Yui and Yuki as well. I feel like, again, Yuki really doesn't matter, so I'd probably actually put Yuki into like the inconsequential one over here. But after all of that, I would say that I am aligned with this chart and therefore Miss Niara. So again, a massive shout out to Miss Niara for this chart because this is actually really, really good. It's very comprehensive. I think it uses all of the right logic. And I think the only differences like between my opinion and this chart is like personal preference. And so again, massive shout out to Miss Niara and thank you for the hard work that you put into this chart. All right, after that, let's have a look at this one. This one is by Chocolate. And so generally speaking, again, looks like our tanks are going up to 10 for, ooh, this is interesting. So he's got the performance for CV and PVP. Actually, you know what? I think after going through Niara's and my own like evaluation for each of the gears, let's have a look at the importance instead. All right, it looks like we got this chart here where it goes from yellow, which is always used down to pink. And so let me have a look at this and give my opinion on it. Lima, irreplaceable for PVP. Yes, if you have the right units. If you don't have the Summer Pekka, if you don't have like the Ilya, if you don't have the Ninon, if you don't have the Reno, Lima is actually like really, really meh. However, most people are at least going to have one of them. And so yeah, I would agree. I actually don't know about this. He's rare specialized use. I don't think she actually gets used like at all. Actually, I think one time in CB3, some madman did it, but I'm not sure if it went well. I can't remember. All right, after that, we've got Miyako with the yellow in PvP. 100% agree. However, this one, Miyako is used sometimes. Yeah, I guess so. I think it's a fair assessment because like whilst we had to use her quite a fair bit in the past, moving forward, we probably won't see Miyako like ever again. I think especially for endgame players, like we just have way too many like front tank options now. And what I mean by front tank is like the Makoto tank or the Kari tank. All right, after that, we have Kuka who is green. Nah, I'd say yellow for sure. I don't know about your brackets for PvP, but like my PvP is full of Ilias and full of Kyokos and full of mages. Oh my God, it's a nightmare. CB, I've never used Kuka and I've never seen her before. PvP for Jun, generally very powerful. I agree if she is five stars and above. Wait, she can't be higher than five stars. Okay, so if she is five stars, then she is generally very powerful. I completely agree with that, but like at three stars, she's kind of really crap. She is blue. Okay, frequently used. Okay, I guess I can agree with this like moving forward. For me personally, up until the current CB, like we've actually used her every single chance we've had. But again, I kind of get the logic because like we might be moving away from like traditional tanks. All right, next we've got Kari who is yellow in CB 
content and situationally useful in PvP. I actually really like this because a lot of people sleep on Kari in PvP. Kari is actually one of the best ways to deal with like those store comps. Pekarin not used in CP and situationally in PvP. Yeah, I guess so. However, I would say I use Pekarin like a lot more than I use other people. So for me, I'd probably bump that up a little bit. Nozomi, I guess so. I haven't seen her in CB like too much. But obviously, again, guys, I'm talking from like the highest level of play. If you guys are probably like more mid game and stuff, I can 100% see why you would use an Ozomi. PvP, yellow, oh, 100%. She is used in like every comp I do. Makoto, core, and this one is blue. So yeah, I would agree. I actually used to use Makoto quite a fair bit in PvP, but not anymore. Akino, unfortunately, agree. Just not, not there. All right, this is a really interesting one because so many people sleep on Tsumugi. She's actually rated yellow here, which is like the highest of importance. And I completely agree with that. She actually just like cucks everything. It's like, oh my God, it's such a nightmare fighting her. However, in CB, I agree with that. Not really any use. Situational, but powerful. It's funny because like for the last like two or three CBs, I've used Hiyori every single time I could. I would say that like up until now, she has actually been core, but like moving forward, maybe she is going to be a, like a light blue. I have definitely used Hiyori way more than I've used Ayane though. And so yeah, I'd probably drop like Ayane down to pink for CB. Actually looking at some of these other ones, I've used like Hiyori way more than I've used like Eriko, Jita. And so if it was possible to be like right under yellow, I would say like Hiyori is that. However, I have never used her for PvP, but I have seen a lot of people who do meme around with her. So I kind of get that. She, she is usable as an attacker. All right, Misogi not used. That's fair enough. Poor Misogi. And Ayane is not used in PvP. Oh, this is interesting because I agree with this, which is funny because like when she first came out, she was hyped to be a more PvP unit. But yeah, I digress. I agree with this. I'm a key call for many comps. Oh, I would say she is yellow for PvP. There is just simply nobody that does what Tamaki does. I would say that she is probably actually even more important than Summer Pekarin. From a CB point of view, I'd probably drop this down unless you're probably more mid game. You will definitely see Tamaki a lot more, especially in the mid game, but like not too much in the end game. All right, so this one, Summer Tamaki, CB core. Yeah, I agree. And then situationally useful. Yeah, I guess so for PvP. I guess so. Unfortunately, guys, I've not talked too much about Summer Tamaki, but like keep your eyes peeled for the guide. Eriko, aside from like the first and like the third CB, I think I have not used her. She's decent and I kind of agree you wouldn't use her in PvP. This one's interesting. This one's actually really funny because my clan was like doing some like weird things with Summer Pekarin in CB. I wouldn't recommend it and so Fringe, yeah, I agree. Generally very powerful. I completely agree with this. Like Summer Pekarin just really axes everybody. However, she really does need the support to do it, but she is by no means meta defining. She is no Ilya. Kurumi, interesting one and I agree with that. She's just not being used too much right now. Jita is situational but powerful. Yeah, I would agree with that. There were some very specific times where we used her, but like she really needed five stars for it. Usable as an attacker in PvP, I probably wouldn't say so. She kind of has like the same weaknesses as like, for example, Erika or Hiyori. You don't really want all of those frontline units, especially when you're facing like Nozomis who was going to like cleave and stun your frontline. Ray, I completely agree. You just won't see her too much. Shizuru, well, this is an interesting one because like I freaking hate Shizuru's in PvP, but I do agree that it's quite situational. Like again, it's for like your summer Pekos or like your anti Ninons, anti Renos. But on top of that, some people are starting to use your Shizuru in like store comps or like in your Ilya comps. I think she's actually getting a lot more use than I thought she would be. And so I kind of agree with this. C's rare specialized use. Yeah, if you're mid game, I guess so. And I agree with both of this for Mimi. However, Mimi used to be quite high for me, especially in PvP. There were a couple of comps that Mimi just like completely crushed. And even today, like I think a few days ago, I used her. All right, next we've got Shinobu. And I actually kind of agree with this. You really are not going to see Shinobu that much. And yeah, you'll never see her in PvP. Mahiru, unfortunately not used, completely agree. And Yukari caught in some comps, I would say she is actually mandatory in CB. She is core in a lot of comps. Maybe that will change in the future, but like, I think she is really, really core. And for PvP, 100% as well. Monica, ooh, I would not put Monica into a CB comp. I get where you would use her, so I can kind of agree with that, but like, I wouldn't use her. There are just way more units that are better, unfortunately. But in PvP, oh yeah, she is very, very powerful. Ninon, knockback potentially useful? Nah, <laughs> I don't agree with that. But generally very powerful, I would say she is one of like the best anti Ilyas. And so if Ilya is meta defining and she is like anti Ilya, I would say she deserves a yellow. Especially in like BA1, there's a lot of Ninons going around. And I don't know if the meta is kind of different elsewhere, but like she is, I think, one of the most important PvE units. Next, we've got Mifuyu, who does not get much use, and I agree with that. And then we've got Ilya, who is core and meta defining. So core and CB, yeah, I guess so, when you do use like the magic comps. And meta defining, yeah, 100% agree. Okay, so we've got Saren, and she is so important to both. Completely agree, nothing to be said there. After that, we've got Anna, and I completely agree with this. This is interesting because like Anna was so prevalent, especially in the early.
early game, but nobody runs her anymore because there are just way better options. Some of Mifuyu not used, not used. That's so sad. Kokoro, we've got core and C's rare specialized use. Mm, okay, fine. Fine, fair enough. Kokoro I use quite frequently, but like maybe that's because I'm a little bit like strange in the head. I just think she's pretty fun to use in PvP, especially like in one of those comps. What was it? Like the anti Ninon comp. So in the anti Ninon comp, which is like Ninon, Lima, Mitsuki, Saren, and Yuki, you could actually run like a whole bunch of like tanks and bruises, including like Miyako, Nozomi, Kokoro, Yui, Maho. And what would happen is like your like bruiser sustain comp would actually like slowly mow over that Ninon comp. But yeah, I guess like saying that out loud, yeah, I guess it is rare specialized use. Summer Kokoro core 100% and situationally useful. Ooh, yeah. So Summer Kokoro was kind of hyped for like two things. She was like hyped for her P defense down and for like her stall potential. If we're talking about PVP generally speaking, I don't think her stall was that good. I just think that there are better stalls such as the Rin stall. And so it looks like Rin is getting a fringe here. And I would say that the stall like for Summer Kokoro and Rin is kind of comparable. On top of that, I've never seen Summer Kokoro used like for like anti stall comps, which you could imagine happening right but I don't think she just has the DPS output to like have a place in those teams so yeah I'd probably say she's more fringe than situationally useful Rin on the other hand because everyone has freaking five star Rins these days like she's being seen on a lot of store comps it's so actually so annoying then we've got Akari who is caught in situationally oh no way no way Akari is yellow for me 100% there are so many places that I use Akari like I use Akari on a daily basis for sure next we've got Yori who's not used in CB fair enough and generally power Powerful in PvP, yeah, if you're willing to spend. Yori is really strong if you're able to get her to five stars. However, anything less, I don't think she's actually that great of a unit. Especially if you're able to get the other mages to five stars, for example, Akari or like Hatsune or Kiaru. I don't think she is that powerful, especially at like two or three stars, which most people are gonna have her at. All right, next we have Arisa, who is so core. Cool. She is so incredibly core cool right now, which is so ironic because like I didn't think she was that good, but she turned out to be such a powerhouse in CB. And so for PvP core versus some comps? Yeah, for me, it's a little bit for anti Ilya. All right, Reno not used, absolutely not. And she is core in her comp. Yeah. I mean, when I've seen her used, it's been like a little bit funkier these days, but maybe that's like BA1 shenanigans. But I kind of agree with the assessment. She's kind of like fallen out of flavor, unfortunately. All right, next we have Susana, who is core, and Shiori, who is core. Oh, I, I would say that she is actually like just under yellow for PvP. I don't know if you guys have seen the Turbo Susana comp. Like, let me like show you guys real quick. So guys, this is it right here and it is Turbo Susana because you got the Monica speeding everyone up but not only that, you have Yukari who is juicing the Susana. And so Susana is going to fire off her UB so so fast and somebody is going to die for it. Typically, this is probably like one of your tanks and combined with like some safe backline damage from Kyoka, this is actually a really really horrible team to run into. The best way to use this in your defense is actually in your P arena where like nobody really expects it. And so the fight starts and within like 5 to 10 seconds, it's suddenly a 5v4. This is not really the only place you use Susana, a lot of people, especially myself, will use her to like counter Kuka. And so yeah, I would probably bump that up to like a yellow or just under a yellow. Shiori I actually use less nowadays, which is really interesting. But I would say that I still use her enough for her to deserve like a green. Eo is interesting, not using CB, which is fair enough. And she is sometimes useful. Yeah, I would say so. She's kind of fallen out of flavor, especially because she's so hard to five star. And so yeah, I completely agree with that. Suzume, I saw use once. This is so interesting. Yeah, I agree. She's just unfortunately such a mixed bag. She's not strong at all. Misato, core in some comps and fringe. Oh, wow. Fringe. No way. Guys, I see Misato so much in like P arena. Like almost everybody is running the Misato stall. I would say that it's almost yellow, but on defense. Actually, now that I think about it, there's one Ilya variant where you have to use a Misato. I think she deserves a lot more than a fringe, probably like a green, especially with the amount of times I've seen her on defense. So if you guys don't know what the Misato stall is, let me just like draw that up for you real quick. And so this is what it looks like. As you can see, there is a lot of single target healing going on. I think this beats a lot of Ilya comps as well. Like, oh my God. But yeah, if you don't run like an anti stall comp into this, it's very likely you're going to lose. All right, let's get back to it. And next we have Kiaru. Kiaru, Kiaru, Kiaru. Fringe. It's so interesting because a lot of places where I need Kyoka, especially in a P arena, I would actually use Kiaru instead. And so I would say she's at least like blue. But hopping over here, she's only a pink for CB. I mean, I guess so because moving forward, she's going to be replaced by Kiaru. All right, we've got Hatsune, CB, 
not use and generally powerful in CB? Yeah, I guess so. Hatsune used to be like a really massive powerhouse, but she's kind of fallen out of flavor these days. So yeah, I guess I generally agree with that. Misaki, not used at all. And we've got Summer Suzume. Yeah, I've seen one or two comps that actually use this, but it's been quite a while. After that, we've got situationally useful here. Yeah, Summer Suzume, the store comps have been really, really crappy, especially in BA1. All right, after that, we've got Summer Kiara, who's core and generally powerful here. Generally powerful, yeah, but like for me personally, I would say that Kyoka is yellow. And for me, if Kyoka is yellow, then Summer Kiaru should be yellow. There's just so much versatility in these two units. I think that they deserve a little bit higher. But yeah, let's move on. And you guys already know CB, Core, Summer Kiaru. You guys have already heard it a million times. Aoi, not use, not use. Yeah, I agree. Sag. Chika, yeah, I don't think I've seen her too much in PvP and sees rare specialized use. Yeah, for CB. I think the first and last time we saw her was actually CB1. Alright, Maho, not use, and situationally useful. Yes, if you're thinking only from like the blind point of view, but I reckon she deserves a little bit more than a blue. I think what a lot of this doesn't take into account is like defenses on arena, and a lot of the time you're going to see Maho on defenses. Alright, so we've got Yui, who is not useful either. Yeah, I guess so these days, especially because you don't see some of the traditional comps, she's just not being used too much. Yuki, I've actually never seen him in CB, and Core in many comps. Yeah, I completely agree with this. Yuki is actually incredibly useful, but he doesn't need much more than three stars. And lastly, we have Kyoka, who I would say is actually core in both. In about 80 or 90% of my attacks, I probably use Kyoka for PvP. I actually use her like way more than like, for example, Summer Pekarin or who else's core. I use her more than Mitsuki. I use her more than Yukari. I use her more than Summer Peko. I think she deserves like yellow for sure. All right, guys, holy crap. We actually went through so much there. Oh my lordy. I hope you guys actually got something out of it because like this is probably like my longest video ever. And as you can tell, I'm actually kind of losing my voice. So I think I need to wrap this up really, really quickly. And so guys, I've got a secret message for you. And that is Bwik. And what I mean by Bwik is that you don't want to Bwik your units. And so if you guys could drop that secret message down in the comments below, I would really appreciate it. Because it lets me know that you've watched my video up until the end. And I thank you so much for that. But aside from that, if this video has helped you or you found it kind of entertaining, then please consider a like, a sub, a comment, a pin, or whatever. Come join the Discord if you want to hang out. And if you would like to support the channel, we've got a whole bunch of ways down in the comments below. We've got affiliate links and we've got a membership thing in which you could get a badge and like some cool emotes. But as my grandma once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye bye.